Hey, I'm Rolf the Promo Guy, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be presenting the movie so many hours in the day. And to do that, we have to have a little bit of understanding on time travel. And as you can see, I'm going so fast, I'm going back in time. And to do that, we're going to talk to a university professor and someone who has some idea about pop culture and where time travel fits in that whole mess. But uh, we won't know until we talk to him, so let's go check it out. So let's get your angle from it. How, uh, let's, uh, let's just break down, how scientifically could it happen? A guy builds a big ass machine, uh, usually involving the flux capacitor, as yeah. I hear, <laughs> and a DeLorean. And uh, then you press some magic buttons and poof, you're in the past. So it has nothing to do with a wormhole. Let's say we got a spaceship out in, in space and you, you found a wormhole and you threw a, threw a capsule through there. It wouldn't come out, you know, five million years in the past. Okay, there's a, there's a lot of shows that people watch where things go back and forth in time through, through wormholes. Great, great sci-fi. But I'm telling you, uh, to create a wormhole, you need a black hole. Yeah. And going into a black hole is a one-way trip to H-E double hockey sticks, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because the environment created by a black hole singularity will take any object and rip it into subatomic particles, okay? But I'm not sure how useful it is for uh, someone to throw a, like, you, you know, a message in a bottle like yeah. you do in the ocean, right? You, you scribble on a piece of paper, you put it, and you toss it, and you hope somebody will pick it up sometime. So let's say we did that with a, with a with a black hole, a singularity, and a, and a wormhole. You'd write your note, you'd stick it in the bottle, you'd throw it into the black hole. The black hole would shred it up into atoms. Maybe these atoms would reappear in the universe somewhere in the past or somewhere in the future, but they would not contain any resemblance of the bottle or the note that you wrote uh, going in. So, if so a black hole is basically a giant confetti maker. A giant, ultra-large, producing ultra small confetti. Yes, you've got it, exactly. Hey, I'm a scientist too. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, what about, you know, going the speed of light? Is that, does that, you know, make tra time travel possible? Okay, so, uh, when one travels at uh, high speeds, their clock slows down. Okay. okay, this is not science fiction. This is actually predicted by theory. Einstein was the first guy. Now, according to Einstein, the closer you get to the speed of light, the slower clocks tick, the slower time goes. And, uh, and his equations actually break down at the speed of light. At the speed of light, if you follow the extrapolation of the math, then, then things, time will stand still. So it's not yeah. really, you can just go to the future. You can't go in the past by traveling the speed of light. This is basically true. One word. Kind of. Cosmic. It's cosmic. <laughs> totally. So what is the speed of light? It's, what is that? C. Never wise. C. C. Yeah, we just call it C. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, 300,000 kilometers per second. Wow. That's fast. You have no idea how fast that is. You're right. <laughs> Three, 300,000 kilometers. You could travel around the whole Earth 25 times in a second. Wow. That is really fast. It's, it's gargantuanly fast. Yeah. It's Superman fast. <laughs> Superman fast. Totally. Okay, okay, well, how about this? Um, you know, let's say I'm in Toronto and I fly to Calgary. Yeah. Would that, is that kind of time travel? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you gain many hours doing it that way. Excellent. Yeah. You so can, you can't I, argue with that physics. I'm, I'm sort of a time traveler myself. <laughs> hey, thanks so much. Yeah. Good, good talking to you. Oh, I don't have this issue. I should pick this up. Oh, hey. Another aspect of time travel is the appearance of it in pop culture. Whether it be movies, TVs, and yes, comic books, it always seems to make an appearance. And that's why we're here at Phoenix Comics to talk to Russell about why this is. So, I mean, it, time travel, it shows up everywhere. Like movies, we've got it in Star Trek, uh, we've got it in Superman, and now comic books. Why? Um, I think time travel is just a great way of telling stories. Um, you can make the past matter. Now, it's showing up in comic books quite a bit, and you've got some examples of that? Right. Um, so one of them is Captain America Reborn. Um, Captain America died about two years ago now. Um, it only took a year for him to come back, but um, one of the things that they did to bring him back was he got uh, unstuck through time. 
The cool thing is he kind of knew what was going to happen, and he was able to actually change history. Um, they did the same kind of thing as Captain America Reborn in, in Return of Bruce Wayne. It's a little bit different because Batman hadn't experienced these, um, these time periods before. They were all new to him, basically, and he had to uh, build his Batman persona um, in the, the time of the caveman, in the time of um, the pirates, um, and he ended up coming back to life kind of through experiencing these times. So um, that one, he couldn't really change anything, though, it seemed like. It was just like he was experiencing these times. And so that's another question. Like, can you even, like, if you go back in time, aren't you just affecting that dimension and you're not really affecting your own? Well, it depends on who the writer is, really. Um, in a book like Watchmen, Alan Moore seems to say that you can't, that everything's determined. Um, Dr. Manhattan can experience all of time, but he has no power to change anything. And in that way, he's, he's actually the least powerful of any of us. <laughs> all right, my man, things to ponder. And uh, we're going to ponder them some more. So as we've seen, time travel is highly unlikely and probably almost impossible. But it can be a great, you know, entertaining diversion or, um, you know, a way for someone to tell a story. So if you see in the next film, time travel mucks up this professor and uh, we'll see how. <laughs>